What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday, Wednesday. Wow. I'm all over the place. Uh, Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Aber. We are going to be talking through tonight's NBA slate. I have a, uh, we both have, have, have engagements tonight. So I'm going to probably go live at around five Eastern instead of uh, six Eastern. And of course we won't have every bit of information, but we'll do our best and go from there. Uh, Sheets, uh, that was a brutal, n- another night last night. I, I just, I swear, it, it, the, the the signs are telling me, don't play for a few days because everybody I'm playing is getting injured. I mean, all of my football lines were wrecked by injuries. Last night, all the basketball ones wrecked by injuries. It's just it's just frustrating when that happens. You know, there's really nothing we can do. It is, except uh, move on to the next night. I guess so. So let, with that said, let's, let's, uh, let's move on and let's talk about this slate. Let's go game by game here. We'll pull your screen up. Yep. Um, so and- I, I, have, I have a couple of... Uh, well, maybe we should wait till we get to the games, but there, there's the it's spacing of the games tonight. It's very, uh, yeah, very important um, yeah. and very interesting. I guess we'll go game by game, and then we'll, re- you know, as we get to the games that, that you know I'm referring to, we'll, you know, we'll reemphasize that point about how important it might be to wait. Um, yep, but we'll see. So uh, let's start, I guess, with with Detroit Charlotte. And again, by the way, if you guys look at your at the projections, I put early stuff up there. They, they're accounting for all kinds of guys being out that might play, all kinds of guys that might play that might be out. You know, just again, just I encourage everybody to go look for the most updated projections. The only problem is, is that today I'm almost certainly not going to be able to update them. So this is going to be one of those rare days where you have to be a Saber Sim subscriber to get access to the to the updated projections from our site. Um, that's hopefully if Bobby comes at five, maybe he can give you some, you know, yeah. some some of these later takes. But you know, even that, I mean, there's going to be a lot changing. So this is going to be one of those days where you know it's kind of on you to kind of adapt and 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 do whatever. We'll do our best to at least. We prepare you for what could happen, but uh, what was it uh, with Donald Rumsfeld, right? We we know what we know, we know what we don't know, but there are things that we don't know that we don't know. So it's the things that we don't know that we don't know is that that that's, that that can be somewhat concerning. But we right. will we will deal with that later. Um, first game, uh, Detroit Charlotte. Uh, unfortunately, you KFK Cunningham is going to be out for the whole season now. Um, very very bad for him. Very bad for the team. Um, but uh, not to be insensitive, but pretty good for DFS eventually because they will eventually, you know, all these guys will be priced differently. It's kind of annoying that they just put in there, give them a three K price tag anyway. Like they're like basically like like there might be somebody that plays it. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. They should just take him off the freaking pool if he's out for the freaking season. If you want to know the truth? Yeah. But um, uh, currently though, you would think that guys like Jaden Ivey would be good plays at 5,500. You would think that, boy, Killian Hayes is 6,600. The the guy who I guess is going to be the most logical is, is Boyan Bogdanovich. But, you know, I've never had that much luck with him just because the guy's always been so shooting dependent, scoring dependent, that you really has to be super efficient for, for, for you to have a big ceiling game. Um, the Jaden Ivey at 5,500 – Seems like something I kind of want to do, you know, now it has nothing to do with his recent performance, right? 23, 22, 16, 16. But, but I keep going back to things that you've said over the course of like the time I've known you, these guys are freaking rookies and, and, and they have, a, they, they just all have upside, you know, and maybe, I don't know, maybe this is, this is the time, you know, they're at Charlotte, uh, you know, decent enough, uh, decent enough uh, total. Maybe, maybe he gets there. Um, the guy who is actually showing up for me in projections, believe it or not, is, is that, is that, that center again, uh, the Jalen Duran, but even him is not like that great of a play. So for me, um, and this being an early game, I don't really see too much on the Detroit side and on the Charlotte side, I don't know what it is. I'm getting these like weird guys as point per dollar plays we'll get to, but Rogier at 8K certainly seems reasonable and the best the best. I think player. Lamelo may play, by the way, just for what it's worth. Oh, is that it then? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's up in the air. It's truly questionable, but we'll know beforehand. I think. Yeah, because I'm getting these other weird guys that are showing up in projections. I didn't want to get into it because, if, especially if Lamelo plays. Um, so I don't know. You have any interest in this game? Um, not especially outside of Duran. I like Jalen Duran a lot. Um, 
Uh, he's starting now over uh, Bagley, and and uh, I think that he's a you know it's a it's pretty much the best matchup possible. He's forty one hundred, really talented, and uh, I feel like he's safe with with upside. So I I, I feel pretty good about Duran as long as he's starting. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty much off the game in general. Um, and then we get on you know we go to the next one sheets. Do you want to start this one off with Atlanta? Yeah. Because I think um, that Bogdanovich is like almost a must. Yeah, uh, that's the first thing. Uh, Bogdanovich is a must for me, regardless of whether Trey plays or not. Um, uh, I do have a, a an opinion though. I, I uh, and just based on just a quote that I that I, I was actually watching this. I do think Trey plays. Um, me too. Yeah, I mean, first they they interviewed him like before they says, "How you feel?" He's like, yeah, "I really, I'll be fine. I don't miss that really that many games. Don't worry." Yeah, it was just a back to back that he missed. He's not. Yeah. But that's what he says. I really don't miss that many games. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, so I think he plays, and I think he's a good player. Um, and I, I think it's it's too. Um, I think it's too fancy to say don't play the two of them together. I I wouldn't mind playing both of them together. If you want to know the truth? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, as far as the bigs, I mean, I'm not really quite getting to Capella today. Um, I mean, he's he, look, he's okay, but I would just. Listen, I would just prefer Trey and and and, and Bogdanovich. Um, on the other side, I, I'm really not getting much from Orlando. Um, but every time I see John Isaac out, I feel so bad. That guy's got. I mean, he could. He had, I guess, maybe still has like real potential. You know, he couldn't, can't stay. I remember he got he got uh, got torn that torn that ACL. I think I, I think I had fifty percent of him that night when he tore the ACL. If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Ren Ship Ponchero, maybe. I don't know. For me, I, I don't really have too much in Orlando. Yeah, I think that it's it's basically like like I think anybody from Orlando is fine. Um, I, I think Ben Caro's fine. I think that Fultz is fine. I think that Wagner is fine to take a shot in for GPPs. Uh I, I'm not really all that excited about any of them. I am a little bit like interested in Bull Bull at this price because I think he does have a ceiling at this price. Um, but I, I just think that there's so many bodies that they've got back now. I'm probably just going to stay off of it outside of the tray. And, and I agree with you that I think it's no problem to play tray with, uh, Bogdanovich here. And I will probably do that in a good portion of lineups that I, if I end up playing at all, because I'm going to be gone at the worst possible time. So hopefully it'll be a quick meeting and I can jump back on my computer again or something, because I probably will throw in a lineup. And it, right as of right now, I think Trey and Bogdanovich probably would likely be in it which would make me want to try to find a, a run back from Orlando, but I don't have one that I feel great about at the moment, but maybe we'll see what else we like on the slate before we make any final decisions. I didn't quite have it in me. I, I thought about you. I'm wondering if you played him at all last night. I didn't play DiVincenzo going back to Milwaukee and he had a nice game, man. I uh, had my, in my DiVincenzo lineups, I had Aiton in all of them. Uh, all of that. And I also had LeBron who was really good. Who put up the 63, uh, you know, I think LeBron was the highest scoring player on the slate. If I'm not mistaken. That's too, was he really? Oh, good I think him. so. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was one of my, <laughs> one of my guys. It's the kind of game you want to you want to play LeBron against the Celtics at home when in a must not a must win but a sort of needing to win kind of a thing. You, th- you think you think after coming back that back from twenty eight and then losing or or I don't know what the, what it, what it was they were total down. I know that at one point they were down like seventeen and then before you knew it they were up by twelve. Like it was like literally within like three minutes. So, and then, so, so you so you think that, if, that 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 after coming back down from twenty in Boston uh, against Boston. And then losing, you think LeBron would 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 appreciate being told, oh, but it's all good because you're the highest scoring fantasy player. <laughs> that's how, yeah, I guess yeah, seriously, that's I what he's not. playing for these days. No, I'm <laughs> I guess not. Uh-huh. Um, but but I okay. So Golden State, I I I, I imagine that Clay is going to sit, um, and I'm fully imagine everybody else plays. I mean, they 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 shut it down last night with these guys. Um, they 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 sat. Uh, Yep, they sat uh, Draymond and Curry. Uh, uh, pretty, I, I'd say on the early side, they they had no interest in bringing them back. So I think it was to rest them up, so they could play today. Um, so I imagine they all play, and it's going to be a two hundred million point total and a you know zero point spread. So I think this game is something you're going to want to do. Um, uh, so on the Golden State side, I mean. Boy, 11K is rough business uh, for Curry. I don't know if I can get to that. Jordan Poole, 7,800 on DraftKings. Woo-wee. 
Yeah. That is, that's a, oh man, that's a rough one. I don't know. Maybe after all that, maybe I can't play them, whatever. Um, interestingly though, since we mentioned Mr. DiVincenzo, who in fact does start if, if, and when Clay is out. Anthony Lamb. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Um, but but that doesn't mean anything cuz cuz DiVincenzo would would likely close but it could be Kaminga um they're, they you know it's hard to know with the warriors sometimes it really usually depends on matchups but yeah i think i think DiVincenzo is is okay i think that everybody is okay i don't i don't see a massive priority i think that Draymond in this game environment might be my favorite play um, well i well and, and for me the, on the on the other side if i mean Halliburton's got to be like one of the top players. I mean, like this type of total and this type of environment and all this stuff. I mean, like I, I, I like him at 9,300. So there's him. I don't know what to do with the rest of Indiana right now. Um, but I definitely like Halliburton and uh, should I play, should we play anybody from Golden State? I don't know what to do. Um, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, like I said, I, I have Draymond is Draymond or, or Curry, I think are both in play obviously, but I'm not like in, overly excited about it um i think aaron neesmith is a potential value you could use on the Ooh. other side okay um he's questionable right now but his minutes are all a little bit all over the place and he's not always crazy productive but 3900 and starting is is interesting enough with um you know if, if if in fact he does start again which i think he would um yeah this game is a big you know looks like a great game but really really hard to find outside of Halliburton the 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 obvious plays here I think that you could argue for Buddy Heald um I think you could make an argument for Miles Turner but for me it's mostly going to be uh probably mostly going to be uh Halliburton and that's most of what I have in this game maybe maybe run it back with Green on the other side I'll tell you Draymond's awesome I don't know if you watched any of the game last night he completely stopped the whole game to get some fan ejected I don't know what I don't know what exactly the, I don't, I didn't see any of the post mortem like any of the interviews after the game, mm-hmm. but he totally stopped the whole game like in Milwaukee and made like the police and security guard like like kick this guy out of the game and it was totally all on camera. It was so awesome. Oh, that's I'm pretty like, funny. Draymond Draymond's, Draymond really is the best. When he when he when he when he uh, when he goes to TNT or whatever, I'm telling you, he's gonna be a freaking legend. Oh, absolutely. Gonna, I totally agree with you. It's like yeah. a surest thing of all sure things. Yeah. Um, I told I couldn't I can't imagine a guy who'd be better outside of like yep. to not since Barkley would there have been somebody yeah yep. yep. so I'm with you um all right should we talk about uh the next one which is your Knicks and, and the Bulls here yeah Man, the Bulls, what a disappointing season they've had Jesus yes they have um go ahead all right I guess uh first thing I have to address you have uh Brunson is uh is is questionable right so uh Okay, I mean, if, if he is in fact out, um, quickly, then there's quickly. Uh, if he starts, right, I presume he's going to start at fifty three hundred. Let me ask you a question: Is Derek Rose still on the team? Derek Rose is uh, officially still on the team. I don't yeah. know if he'll play at all. Yeah, he didn't see the floor. He's just yeah, he's just kind of uh, out of out of it. Um, if Brunson plays, I mean, it doesn't seem like a, such a such a great environment but but um i guess 6800 is fair enough randall at 87 seems a little a little pricey um but i guess i would just go with those two guys uh presuming that brunson plays if brunson's out then again we'll have to rerun projections and 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 do whatever and mitch rob at 5200 i'm always going to have him show up but there's other i think there are other centers today um we'll get to one I, i actually I mean Durant uh, at forty one hundred. I mean he's he's I don't want to say as good as Mitch Rob, but I mean point per dollar he's just as good. Um, on Chicago, I mean n- nothing. I mean I, Caruso thirty six hundred. Do I want to do that? Um, it was only like a week ago though that we were saying we're supposed to play everybody against the Knicks, and now I can't find anybody. I mean, DeRozan, 8,400, 8, Levine, 74. Maybe we're just supposed to do this. Maybe we're supposed to play Levine and or DeRozan, play Randall. If Brunson plays, play Brunson. And and just say the totals is is wrong. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't entire – well, I, I actually think the totals totals pretty solid. I mean – No, I know. I, I like DeRozan. I, I like playing one of DeRozan or Levine here. Um, I think that Levine, it seems more like – like maybe it could benefit him because the outside shooting the Knicks give up, but 
I do like like DeRozan, and I think that there's a massive ceiling there. Um, so I, I think I like the idea of trying to play one of those guys. And then I have everybody on the Knicks as fine, but not all that exciting. Caruso is an interesting value at 3,600. I think that's that's playable. Um, I don't think it's guaranteed that he starts, but I don't think that really matters because he'll close. Um, but, but between Kobe White and Caruso, you'd think one of those two guys should get enough minutes to have a game here. And the weird part is, I don't know why Kobe White's projection is so bad. Um, I guess maybe because Caruso is coming back. I guess I guess that's the the answer. It's pretty simple. But I guess I guess Car- Caruso, Javante Green will show up a little bit, and I don't mind a long shot Kobe White play. But I do think that that Levine and DeRozan are 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 both really really solid. And I don't even mind if you want to play Vooch instead of either of those guys. And Mitch Rob uh, and Brunson are probably the best two plays on the other side, and I probably won't end up playing them. All right, you ready to talk about Sacramento and Toronto? Yeah, um, I I imagine that Fox is playing. Um, I imagine he's not. Yeah, you don't think so? I, I think on a back to back when he's clearly banged up. Um, now they did they did he only played twenty nine minutes last night because they were down, you know. So maybe maybe he'll be able to go. Um, but but I think we should be ready in case he doesn't. <laughs> well, okay. Fortunately, doesn't leave us with a lot. Of, uh, it doesn't leave us with a lot anyway. <laughs> Fortunately, it's seven thirty game. Um, yeah, and yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Play Mitchell again, or or Monk if he's out? And then, I mean, if he's out, also, I mean, what are you going to get three quarters in this game? Um, I don't know. Um, the, the Toronto side for me is kind of interesting because I, I guess I'll put it to you this way: Siakam is rating for me to be a really, really good play. Like my according to my value scores, whatever, he's like my second best overall play. Just it's it, it's interesting to me to play Siakam at 10-5. You know what I mean? Like it, when we play guys at 10-5, we really need 60 um, out of these guys usually. And yes, with Ananubi out against a team that gives up a lot of stuff, maybe, maybe he can do it. Um, but he's only done it like once. Right. Um, so I don't know. Uh, he, he's certainly looking to be again. He's my second best player. We'll get to my top play in a second. Um, but he's definitely my favorite of the Torontos. I like him. I guess how can I say how can I say I like him more than Van Fleet? I mean, but listen, the two of these guys are gonna are gonna dominate the dominate the, the fantasy points in this game. And if the game stays close, I guess you want to have one one of them. I don't know why I'm getting, Van Vliet. I see is higher owned though than than Siakam. At least this is again this is really early and kind of stupid. But um, uh, I'll just go back to it. I like Siakam the best, then Van Vliet. Nobody else for me on Toronto, and uh, that's about it. Uh, I I think that all of Toronto's in play. I think Boucher, um, okay. Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, or Siakam. Um, I, I, for me, I'm leaning a little more uh, Van Vliet or Boucher. Um, and I I really don't want to. I, I don't know what to do. All I can say is if the Aaron Fox is out, the guy I'm going to take a shot on is Terrence Davis. Okay. I mentioned last night that I the Terrence Davis. My prediction was. Tomorrow night, Terrence Davis will be the the highest point per dollar play on the slate. Um, going, oh, nice. back, okay. going back to Toronto, so but that, that's counting on Fox or somebody else sitting. Um, so I, I need I obviously need that to happen. But as of right now, I've just got I, I I just have it as a speculative thing as long as we assume Fox is still playing. Um, and and I just don't have enough of interest in all these guys. I do think Fox's price is getting kind of ridiculous, but it's a terrible matchup um, for him. So I, I'm I'm basically just on the uh, Van Vliet, Barnes, or Boucher as my as my play from this game. Um, until we find out that De'Aaron Fox is out, and then I can play Terrence Davis. <laughs> Not even to say that it will be Terrence Davis, but but I do think that it'll open it up for him a little bit. So I, I think that he would be he would become a really interesting play uh, for value. All right, uh, let's talk about some of the. Uh, well, what do you have next? You have my. You have. Uh, I have Miami. my. I have Miami OKC. Okay, let's jump over to that one then. Why don't you start that one off? So my uh, my top play on the slate is Bam right now. Um, probably the stupid. The stupid. I keep saying stupid. It's premature. I mean, if you look at my 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 ownership projections right now, they have him at only sixteen percent. It's it's just got to be high. Um, with Butler out, he's only eighty three hundred against Oklahoma City. I, for me, this is the. This is by far my easiest play. I'm probably, listen, if this if this holds and the slate holds the way it is, I'll have him in my big lineup almost 100% for sure. Um, and that's that. 
Uh, other guys in Miami with Butler out, you know, it's uh, it's it's a little frothy to play Hero at eighty. I think at eighty something hundred. Um, uh, Lowry at sixty five, I mean, maybe. But but for me, Bam is like clearly the best. Oklahoma City, uh, for me, it's the, it's the usual suspects. Uh, Shea at 10K. He's had, you know, some, I want to say down games, whatever. It is. Listen, you put up 54 freaking fantasy points against Dallas on the road. I mean, like, that's, you're humming. Excuse me, for 42 real-life points. Yeah, but I then mean, you get an even worse matchup tonight, and we're supposed to be excited about 54 fantasy points? Well, we're not, we're not, what I'm saying is, yeah. I'm not excited about it, but I'm just saying that, that, that he's, He's, he's doing fine. You know, it's not like he's, he's, doing yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like fine. That. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, uh, Giddy is 7,100, just okay. Um, really not too much actually from OKC. I'm getting again, like these weird point per dollar plays showing up. I'm getting like Darius Beasley at 3K. Is he even play? I, I don't know. And then, um, Poku at forty three hundred. That that is he is he actually forty three hundred? Jalen yeah. Williams at forty four hundred. Okay, so those guys I'll play like Pokashevsky and or Jalen Williams at at power forward, small forward, whatever at forty three hundred. Those guys I, I want to ask you about those guys. Those guys to me are kind of interesting. Um, so that's where I'll go with OKC. Those two forty two hundred guys and on Miami side probably Ben. I'm going definitely Ben. Yeah, Poku, Poku, Williams, or Dor. I mean, Poku is just, it's the most high variance guy in, in the NBA. Like, we just have to accept <laughs> it. He usually starts the first half and doesn't start the second half. I don't understand that. Like, it's like I've never seen a team do it so consistently. Just for max, for max fantasy aggravation. That's all. Well, he just, yeah, I mean, you're getting like, you can get 45 from him or 50, and you can also get five. Um, right. And in this matchup, I just would rather probably not do it. I think Jalen Williams is more secure with minutes. I think Lou Dort is getting to a price where he's actually playable at 5k, but I'm, I'm not quite excited about it. I think Giddy is probably the best play on the OKC side. And I'm not that excited about that. I I, I just want to reiterate, I keep saying it. And I don't know why we had a bunch of people who played Halliburton the other night against Miami. I was saying that, I mean, I've said this over and over again, you might squeak one game or two a, a year out of this, but they just don't give up points to point guards. <laughs> like it just, it's, it's happened ever since wherever Lowry's gone, by the way, that's partly true. Yeah. But I guess so. It's not a fun matchup like at all. Um, so I, I'm, I, I just don't do it. And I, and I live a, a happier life. I mean, we just saw this, the, the season low for like basically everybody against this Miami team when, you know, when they're semi healthy, even, and, and just having Butler out, I consider that, but I I'm with you. I, I like Bam in this game as my sort of my only play, to be honest with you. I think you could make an ar argument for Caleb Martin, Kyle Lowry, but I just probably would rather not do it. And one of these days, Oladipo is going to get a little yeah. more run. Yeah. It just, I don't know if this is the right slate to try to, to guess on that. We still haven't seen the over 23 minutes yet for him, um, including when he was back in Indiana. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on Oladipo just probably just a little longer. Um, so I think it's really just bam for me in this game, but certainly a lot of playable plays, just not, not very exciting ones. Uh, Jalen Williams probably being my favorite on the other side, along with, uh, with uh, Giddy. Like everybody rates to five plus X their thing on, on, on OKC, but none of them look quite good enough to me. <laughs> it's weird. All right. All right. Um, we got, what do we have? What do you have next? Uh, San Antonio? I, have Portland, Port I have Portland and San Antonio. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, I guess a question I'll come right out with that uh, we could talk about is is who do we like more, Lillard or Trey Young? Right, same same price, same same position. Um, I currently have Trey Young rated higher. Um, that's just where I am right now. Um, uh, aside from that. Oh, you know what I'm getting again? I'm getting this Charles Bassey um, at 4,100. I'm getting – is Isaiah Roby? Does he still play? I, I have these two guys. So Bassey and Isaiah Roby is kind of values. Um, and that's pretty much all I got from this game is, is maybe Lillard and those cheapos from San Antonio. Yeah, um, I'm I, I'm curious what they do here because Gorgie Jang will probably be the top – point per dollar play on the slate if he starts okay um, well, is, is it like, possible he might start sure okay i mean like saberson has him as like far and away they've got him at 8x oh, okay uh 
and you know 50 percent ownership basically I, I just put it this way I, I think you're playing one of best the problem is if they do just all rotate with each other, it's really hard to know what happens there. Sohan will probably be on a minutes limit. You're not going to play two bigs against Portland. So one of Jang, Bassey, or Roby, but like that's a lot of guys to go around. Um, one of them probably ends up crushing their price. It's it's really hard to know which one. And even, w- well, whichever one starts is going to pop off like projection wise. It doesn't mean that they're going to play more than 20 minutes. So yeah. just be a little bit careful is all I, all I would say with this is just... As of right now, I have Jang, Bassey, or Roby as a priority, one of the three, most likely being, I guess, Bassey for me right now, but it's close. Um, if Jang starts, it's hard to ignore 3K starting. Right, 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 right. Um, and 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 I and I don't have any interest on anything in Portland. I don't I don't even think anybody's really that playable outside of maybe uh I think you can make an argument for Nurkic and I think you can make an argument for Hart. Um, I don't really see anybody else as being that exciting of a play against San Antonio, who's Finally, I believe they, they finally won a game the other day. Um, or did they win a game? I don't know. They they had lost eleven in a row before that. Um, but nothing that I'm that I'm all that excited about on the Portland side. It's really just one of those one of those three for and and that's assuming that Bates Diop is back and good to go. So San Antonio's got a lot of possibilities of who of who even is going to be available. But what scares me is that no matter who it is, they're probably going to have at least eleven or twelve guys they play. So just a little bit, a little bit cautious on, on whoever the, you know, the big man we choose to play from there. And, 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 you know, if, if Nurkic wasn't center eligible, I think that he should smash all of these guys. And I think they'll feed him in this game. Um, Nurkic without shooting the ball has been putting up, you know, if you put up 42, two out of his last three games and you, you give him like the nut matchup with nobody who can physically match up 50 is definitely a possibility. So I kind of like Nurkic a little bit, but. Uh, mostly it's going to be Bassey, uh, Roby or, or Jang, whichever one starts probably, but none of them do I feel are like our lock. I also feel like one of them probably makes it. So you need to have them <laughs> like to win. I mean, cause they, they, there's a good chance that these guys, that, that at least one of these guys, like eight to 10 X is their price. And I kind of want to, I, I don't want to just ignore it with no Zach Collins. All right. Uh, what do we got next? You got uh, the six o'clock games. So yeah, so we got we got Cleveland Dallas, which is a kind of a slow a slow game between two teams that are pretty good. Um, but uh, from a fantasy perspective, I mean, it's it's to me I I don't really like much out of here. I mean, you have Luca at twelve six. Who, I mean, look, I mean, he is matchup proof. But what what is what does he get? Sixty sixty five sixty five might be enough. Um, but it might not be. Um, so I'm probably off of this game, uh, pretty much. I don't really get too much of the Cleveland guys. Just kind of a, I have a slow game with slow total. And as a result, they all just kind of project kind of blah. So I'm, I'm kind of off of this one. Yeah. You, you may, may, maybe give like an uptick in minutes to, to, to the bigs because there's, you know, we know that Cleveland's going to have two basic, basically two bigs out there all the time. If you count Kevin Love. Um, so that, so that's like a little bit interesting, like, um, and they can move Steve Dorian Finney Smith over to the three, but one of one of Wood Powell uh Kleber should be on the or two of Wood Powell Kleber should be on the court maybe a little more than they're being projected for. What to do with that? I don't know outside of maybe maybe considering Christian Wood. Um I, I don't know. I'm sort of struggling. I, I don't really have this this doesn't feel like the kind of game that's very DFS friendly. The one thing I'll say is Kevin Love, like, well, both Mitchell and Garland are reasonable for their upside. And Kevin Love is 4,100. The thing that sucks is with Karis LeVert going to the bench and taking over the second unit more, Kevin Love's not getting those those 40 fantasy point games anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but 4,100 is probably a good enough price to take a, take a take a shot with Kevin Love if, if you don't have anything else. And you could always switch over to other value once you find out later in the day. But I do kind of like the Kevin Love long shot play. He would be the only thing for me in this one. Yeah, so this 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 next game is the one that I was kind of alluding to when we talked about how spacing spacing matters quite a bit. Um, because this is this is the game where you need to have the information on it because this this game could either be a game where you want to play zero of or basically just stack the whole thing, depending on how it plays out. Because yep. on Washington, you have both Porzingis and Beal at, as questionable. Um Beal has not played at all, has not played in a while. Let's say maybe he comes back, but he's still questionable. You have Porzingis, who had been playing, but he got uh, injured in his last game, didn't finish the last game with a back, and he's legit questionable. And and 
it's a nine o'clock game. So like if you look if you look at the if you look at the universe where both of them don't play, for example, then you're really playing four Washington guys. Um and and those guys would be uh Goodwin, uh we go back to Demi, you would play Kuzma, you'd probably play Gafford and it's hard to ignore you know, Will Barton going back to freaking Denver coming off a great game. Um that, that could be uh so you're you might you might if you get one one form of news want to play five Washingtons and run it back with Jokic, for example, right? On the mm-hmm. other hand, if you have Beal and Porzingis both in, you probably don't want to play much except have you know a cool little flyer of Will Barton going back to Denver at forty eight hundred, you know, which you might want to try anyway, just for just for fun. Um, if they're if they're back, I don't I don't know if. I don't, that's gonna be a tough one to get away with. Like Will Barton, legit may not play. Like, uh, he might. He might not. He, he might. He might play like twelve. No, more. More likely, I guess he plays like twelve minutes. But if everybody's back, like right, okay, he I comes guess. like farther down the depth chart. But may, maybe he gets his normal twenty. Um, okay. I think. I mean, Monty Morris is going back to Denver also, and he's starting if he, if he plays. Oh, I forgot that he's still. So and, and there's another one. So he's questionable as well. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, so like I said, and I'm I was just presuming he's out too. So if he's in. You, you, it, so the the problem is is that it is nine o'clock. We can't even get mad. If, oh my God, they're making us wait so long. It, it, listen, they didn't say the game was you know they didn't yeah. ask for the nine p.m. game. You know whatever yeah. it is. Um, hopefully they have something out of shoot around, um, which could which would help a little bit. Well, help a lot, obviously. But you have to prepare for the possibility that you know both those guys, or maybe all three of them, are out. So I think that at least in some of your lineups, you just want to hold everything. Uh, until this um, and it's annoying because there are good plays earlier um, but I think that 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 a world where bo- all three of those guys are out like Morris Beal and whatever now you're left with like eight like eight or nine people you could put on the floor you know what I mean yeah um, and it won't even matter that it would be a 15 point spread because they'd have to put people on the floor mm-hmm. the whole game um, so uh, I think that you you I think you have to wait and in some of your lineups. I think you do have to wait because it just costs you too much. If you, if you burn all those slots and the news kind of comes that way, you know, and then on the Denver side, I, I, I think that, that Jokic, um, obviously if we're going to end up, you know, playing all these Washingtons, I think that Jokic is, is a fine play in a kind of a, a weird way. I want to play him anyway. Um, but uh, obviously he's, obviously a much better play if you have to deal with all those Washington stacks. So that's, that's where I'm at in this game. Uh, any, anything different, any, anything to add there? Um, well, they're going to need somebody to match up with Jokic. Um, and it, Kristaps is not, is not, is not the ideal candidate. Like he's just too skinny. And I, I personally think that there's, says, you know, that it's weird to say that you're playing a speculative angle. Maybe some of these guys sit, but I think that, playing Gafford is the thing I like doing the best in that situation. Cause if Porzingis sits, then Gafford is becomes the best point per dollar player right. on the slate. Yep. And if he doesn't, you still have the upside of Porzingis foul trouble. You have the upside of maybe Porzingis can't match up with him that they have to bring in uh, uh, Gafford. Gafford and Gafford is still not an ideal matchup for him either, but like it, it's definitely a possibility that, that he could, that he could be there and he's a good point per minute guy. So there, you know, even in, even if he doesn't get there and he plays twenty minutes, he could still get you twenty five fantasy points. Um, so, th- so that's my favorite speculative play. It is really, really hard with so many questionables. I'm I'm just treating it right now. I'm assuming most of those guys play tonight. Um, they had time off. It, most they're they're all projected to be to play. Maybe somebody sits, but I don't I don't think it's going to be enough for me to have too much uh, interest in this one on the Washington side unless multiple guys sit. And on the Denver side, it's the usual things. You could you could always play Jokic. Um, I think it's a good matchup for him. I think there's a massive, massive ceiling, and he's been really good lately. So I, I don't mind Jokic, and I don't mind Murray. Um, those are my two favorites. Murray's finding his form a little bit. Um, so Jokic, Murray, and Bruce Brown are all in play, but I like Jokic and Murray the best. Uh, large field, Bones Highland, because of the potential blowout. Jokic or Murray. I'm just putting that in there. All right. All right, Cheech, you wanted to take us to the last one? Yeah, and here's another one with um with with a lot this is a lot of potential. You know, I if if people play all this stuff and all this stuff doesn't work out or whatever it is, 
and they they waste all their slots and then D'Angelo Russell in fact doesn't play I mean you're gonna want like all all the Noel right 4600 and you might have foregone the opportunity to do that you know um it's a weird questionable for for Russell which kind of makes me feel like it's it's legit you know what I mean because he finished the game you know what I mean it wasn't like there was any issues. He not only finished the game, like the game was kind of over and they still let him kind of finish the game. You know, he was, he was in there for a while. I, I remember I was, I was sweating a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. um, there was no injury in that game. You know what I mean? Like something must've happened like either in a practice or something, you know, just a, just some random questionable to show up there after basically playing a full game like that without being taken out for any reason. Um, well, it, was, I, it was the fewest minutes he's played outside of foul trouble basically this season okay. um outside of foul trouble or blowouts um not for the season but for the last month month or so so then he has he has a left knee contusion obviously if he is out like you said noel is like almost impossible not to play right. um, and may, may, maybe that's what you can do is is that that's another thing you could speculate on and then yeah. and then if other information opens up you can you can switch over there but i do think noel is is certainly in play and i'm getting very like i just want to point something out why i I'm sort of confused by this Edwards thing. And I know he's inconsistent and stuff like that, but his usage going way down without Carl Anthony Towns was not something I expected. <laughs> um, and I don't exactly understand it. It's confusing to me. Um, at some point he's going to break through and, and really put a big number up there. Uh, it's just frustrating though at the moment. And then on the Clippers side, you know, with everybody sort of back I, I I mean look Kawhi was insanely efficient the other day I don't know if you can count on that but you do like to see him playing 30 minutes and he's 6900 yeah. it's 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 certainly reasonable enough it's okay not- I mean I was hoping to get a little I mean I was greedy right I was hoping to get a little cheaper somehow because I, yeah. I was gonna I mean I don't know uh c- yeah. continue I'm, I'm sorry no no you're fine I mean it, 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 it I don't have a whole lot to say about it I I, I feel like I want to do stuff in this game and I can't figure out what actually makes the most sense to me um Zubac has sort of lost a minute lately they've been playing some more small lineups but his price is kind of tempting uh Gobert has been good, really good without Towns uh the you know the rebounds shoot right back up again and he's got two two out of the last four games he's got 20 rebounds um so I think Gobert is 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 in play and I think that one of Russell or, or Edwards, I, I would I would say would be a priority. But with with Russell, you know, a legit questionable if if we want to take that angle, I think that we should really be considering uh, Edwards and Noel, um, and maybe without a run back. But it's 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 hard to know with Russell. I'll see what I can dig. It, it also, like, and and I don't want to make too much of a narrative. Russell always plays well at Staples. <laughs> um, he he's I mean more against the Lakers he goes he's still pissed off about that whole the way he, he felt like he was treated um and I think that uh you know that, that that if Russell plays I think I think he's interesting so this game I have with a big question mark which is you know going to happen these this time of year in the NBA a lot but it's kind of frustrating not to have more concrete plays the guys I do have that I do feel are more concrete though as as priorities for the whole slate um, I like the idea of playing one of the Toronto Raptors. I like the idea of one of DeMar- DeRozan and Levine. I like Bam. I like Halliburton. I like Trey. I like Bogdanovich. And then for value, I like the Gafford, Jang, Bassey, Roby, potentially playing two of the one, one of the Spurs and then Gafford potentially on on the other side um, as as potential value. And obviously the Bogdanovich is 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 value on its own. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll say something else. By the way, um, in in large field GPPs or maybe at all GPPs, you know, everybody's going to see what we see and what I see at, at, at BAM being like such a great play at that price. I, I will tell you something. You could end up with like a relatively low owned Gobert at the same price um, uh, later on in the slate. Uh, now, obviously you could play them both, but, but I think that Gobert relative to his chances of, you know, scoring, for example, is, yeah, is, is, yeah. is, is, I think, I think it's a really, really good play actually. Yeah, I like it. It also gives you a little bit of flexibility if you wanted to. Like, if you had it in, like, you know, if the one thing I like to do in that situation sometimes is, like, I'll play go, go bear in my utility spot, and then mm-hmm. I can I can switch over to Russell if I want to, just for to, and then have, like, the, my lineup split between go bear and Russell. But I do like go bear on, its, on his own. Yeah. And I agree with you that I don't think – I don't think Bam is that much better of a play. It's a great matchup for Bam, so it's hard to ignore that. But I, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of, of maybe uh, – 
maybe doing the Gobert thing. That's not a bad idea, Sheets. I think that's something I, I'll definitely consider because those that, that those rebounding numbers, like, I mean, what is his? How does he hurt you too? Like, what is Gobert going to put up? Like forty? Like, right. I mean, almost every time here, like he's just getting he's getting every rebound. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard not to be interested. So I, I kind of like that idea and. And I might be a sucker and, and and go back and play a little bit of uh, Anthony Edwards again. He's going to put up some 60 pluses. Um, I do need to correct. LeBron was not the highest scoring player in the state last night. Tatum was, but I did. And again, in my LeBron Tatum lineups, I had Cameron Payne. That was really frustrating. How did Davis do last night? Uh, he had 61. So he was good too. 61? Yeah, he had 61. Harden at 62. Wait a minute. What, what did LeBron have? 63. Tatum. So they, had, they both got over 60, huh? Tatum had 66. Jalen Brown at 58, like at, at 92. I wonder how it worked. Remember I said earlier, I wonder if you just play like an AD Tatum lineup and you can make it work. I wonder I wonder if that actually worked somehow. Well, I think that LeBron and, and, and Tatum did work. Um, or whatever. You know what but, I mean? But, but, uh, but Harden, Harden savings probably was the way to was the way. Oh, work. right. And, and then anybody who played Westbrook made all the money because he put a 56. Did and, he really? Yeah. And so he, between and, those three guys, they put up 200 points. Like, that was they crazy. did. They put up 200 points, yeah. Um, and then also, and I, and I, and you know, the, the, the other, the, my other get wild play that I kept saying, I, I was frustrated that he wasn't producing more was Jared Vanderbilt, who was 5k and he put up 49 and a half. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't end up playing him, unfortunately. I, I have one other observation from last night and we could, we could think about this. I'm going to remind myself of this. So when Drew Holiday was ruled out and Javon Carter was starting, whatever, obviously he popped as like an amazing play. Everybody was playing and whatever it is. And I played him. I played like almost all my lives, you know, whatever. And as soon as I clicked the button, I, I, I just thought that it was, it was just awful. And, and this was, this was my, my, my idea was that usually when these point guards, you know, these cheap point guards get starting, they actually have the ball. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> during these possessions and then this, whatever they fall into points, whatever it is. I'm thinking about this. I'm really playing a freaking guy at huge ownership in my head where it's just going to be Giannis with the ball every time down the court. You know, maybe I was wrong. I mean, that's a weird way to think about it. And he eventually got there because they let him, they let him in during the garbage time where everybody, you know what I mean? Like barely, you know, and I, I got to remember that in the future, you know, when you have these, the cheapo, the, the point guards, they're not, the point guards are never actually going to have the ball sort of, you know what I mean? Like right. or if they have the ball, they'll give it up like right away and never get back. Um, just to, just a type of play to kind of, kind of remind myself of, um, I agree on big slates on slates like last night. I think it was still probably, I'm guessing he was probably not necessarily in the optimal lineup, but in, in the lineups that won, I would guess that he was. Yeah. In there. Um, the uh, on FanDuel, I just want to bring out a couple of guys that are just, at least to look to me to be substantially different than on DraftKings. One, the opposite side, by the way, you never see this, but, but actually Bogdan Bondanovich is being priced relatively fairly on FanDuel. You know, he's a, uh, he's six K instead of five K. You know, right. um, so you can't just jam him in like with impunity over there. Um, uh, the other guy who still remains very cheap on FanDuel is Markel Fultz um, at forty six hundred. Uh, the other guys are very normal, like Capella, uh, Pool. Pool's much cheaper over there. He's sixty seven hundred. That's that seems reasonable. Um, actually, that seems really good. Actually, if if, if Clay is going to be out, um, and then other guys that are cheaper, maybe Boucher at forty nine hundred might be a little better. Kaminga at 4,400 might be a little better, but th those, those are the guys that I should see on FanDuel are a little different. Yeah. I, I, I really like Kaminga, especially over there. Um, and every, you know, I think, you know, Capella is a little cheaper and his skill set lends itself a little more to this. Taylor Martin with the steel block upside. I think that there's another one that's a little bit better. Um, Boucher, his skill set blocks obviously lend itself better to FanDuel. Um, those blocks and steals are so important on these bigger slates to try to really target on your FanDuel lineups because you get that and it, you think it's an outlier game if the guy has eight steals and blocks combined and, and maybe it is, but the guys with the upside of doing that consistently are the guys you want to play because if you can get that free 24 points to, in addition to everything else you do, that's just, it's just really, really, really hard not to, not to have a massive game there. Yep, those, turno um, those, those turnovers add up, and those 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 steals add up. The, the turnover, yeah, the turnovers on both both ways too, and then and then the guys who don't turn the ball over as much. Anyway, it should be a fun one tonight. I will be live at five Eastern, and uh, good luck to everybody today. Good luck, everybody.